the world problems. The Under the Hood Show is heard weekly on this and other great radio stations across the U.S. Find out how you can participate in the show by visiting underthehoodshow.com. With Russ Evans, this is Shannon Nordstrom thanking you for tuning in to the Nordstrom's Under the Hood Show. Have a great day and remember, PTLA. The opinions heard on this program, based on the many years of experience of Russ and Shannon, are offered for entertainment value only and as a guide to your repair needs. No claim to repair or cause is given or implied. Always consult with your own certified technician and follow all safety procedures before attempting any repair. To be a part of the show, call 866-594-4150. Under the Hood is produced by Prairie House Productions. All content is the property of Nordstrom's Automotive Incorporated and may not be used without our permission. Copyright Nordstrom's Automotive Inc. Now, let's go under the hood with the Nordstrom's Motor Medics. Welcome to the Under the Hood Show from the Autotempest.com studios. All the cars, one search. This is the Under the Hood Show. Russ Evans is here to answer your automotive questions. Thanks for joining us. We're glad you're here. Under the Hood. Shannon Nordstrom is here to do the same. Welcome, Hoodies. Thanks for tuning in so we can help you tune up. I'm Chris Carter here to answer your calls at 866-594-4150. 866-594-4150. We've got some people who have already been calling and waiting on a hold as we started the show. So let's go right to Pennsylvania and talk to Don. You're on the Under the Hood Show. Don, what can we do for you? Hey, uh... My ex-wife has a 2005 Yukon Denali, and within the last year, five fuel pumps have went out of it. So it's down again. The last fuel pump was an AC Delco just put in last week. It lasted for about four days and stopped working again. Same issue as all the rest of the fuel pumps. Is it's it, been... It sounds horrible. Is a this a, was this a... Uh, it's a curse. No, I just got to ask, Russ, was this a friendly split? <laughs> I don't know that you have to ask. That. I think I have not. to ask. Okay. Absolutely not. But I absolutely not. But I need my kids to be transported around. Oh, okay, and gotcha. gotcha. I just oh, wanted gotcha. to make sure there wasn't any funny business going on here with some sort of, you know, like something <laughs> getting put in the tank or something. Okay. Or uh, I had to go there. <laughs> <laughs> and this is his way to throw off suspicion. Exactly. Off He's got yeah, okay. a master plan here. Yeah. I'm calling the under the hood show. I'm going to get honey, this. Fixed. I'm trying to help. Oh, he wouldn't say honey. Look at I'm trying to help. <laughs> right. Oh, now your that, honor. I, right. your honor. <laughs> oh, I went too. I went too far. I went too far. You guys better take over. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> You're right, Shannon. It could be something in the tank. <laughs> I can't. I can't continue now. <laughs> Russ, it's all you. Yeah, it could be something in the tank. If there's a contamination in there, it will eat up fuel. Pumps. But the type of contamination is going to be something. In the tank, not, sugar in the gas not, tank, not something that's been added, right? Because if you, when you, you could have a catastrophic failure of a fuel pump. Yeah, it would be self-generated. Exactly, and it will generate a okay, a, 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 a just a crud that can get in the tank, and if it is not flushed well that first time, you kind of just keep repeating the failure because the next material gets in there. Even with the filters, it can suck it up. Now we're going down that road. There could be something else going on here too, but Russ, isn't that one Things of the more common Things that kill problems? fuel pumps you repeatedly. See? Yeah, <laughs> simple one: fuel pressure or a fuel filter. If the fuel filter hasn't been replaced on a vehicle that not all of them have them, some of them are built into the pump, but on a vehicle with a fuel filter, like uh, this one, up to 06 in that, yeah, that uh, if the fuel fuel filter isn't changed, 05. it's going. Yeah. yeah. Oh well, up to 06 has the filter still, and then they went new body. You know, they changed with within the pump on some of them so if that fuel filter is restricted yeah that extra pressure on the frame rail on the driver's side about under the driver's foot on the left side there anybody put one on it bueller no because she's telling me it didn't come with one if there's not one there she's telling me this I think there's one on that driver's side front. It should be up to 06, right, Shannon? I'm just thinking through this. I It's returnless now on that yep, one. Yep, yep. It should be 07 was the new body style. I'm, yep. I was thinking they still had a filter up underneath there, and if we're wrong on that, then we'll pull that option off the table. But let's... And if it doesn't, it's in the fuel filter, and it gets replaced when they replace the whole right, assembly. In the, in the tank. In the tank. Right, in there's the, no yeah. way to bypass it. But if there is one, on, it'll be on the driver's side frame rail just ahead of the... In line. So that could be something where someone was thinking it was in the 
fuel pump or in the tank yep. and not changing the one that was under that. That, that can cause a repeated failure. That's one thing. The other thing is low voltage. If that fuel pump is not getting correct voltage, the amperage back there running through can cause the thing to heat up and, and cause issues. It can, it can burn it up. Um, any, any of the circuits, a uh, blower for your, your heat and air conditioning, that same thing. It's got to have good supply of voltage and a good ground back there. So what we're going to do, we get one of these in. If you say, Hey, I've had five fuel pumps in my ex wife's <laughs> We'd much vehicle. rather have it be in the person that get told there's five bad yeah. ones than the second person. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I want to know about it as a different shop. I got to know that it's had more than one in there. Cause I want to see what's causing this. I'm going to pull the tank. I'm going to inspect it. I'm going to flush it out or replace the tank if there's any signs of contamination there. If I, if I don't think I can get it all cleaned out and I see contamination, it's going out and another one's getting put in. They're not very expensive. And I'm going to put a new pump in it. Then I'm going to install it make sure I've got a new fuel filter if it's equipped with one. And I'm going to check the voltage and amp draw right at the pump and make sure that it has got the correct voltage and amp. Oh, you had to do that, didn't you? Uh, I'm taking it off of her child support payment. Ouch. Okay. okay, so then she'd have no motivation to say there's fuel pumps going right. on. There really too many isn't. questions. I have, yeah, that's, that was... My life has gotten me a long ways by asking a lot of questions, but I did need to ask these. I'm sorry. <laughs> Thanks very much for the call, Don. 866-594-4150. But that is a situation where that could happen, right? I mean, where somebody really just happen? replaces yeah, it the pump and thinks that yes. the pump is involved, so they miss that. Uh, over and over and over, and you can have any system, brakes, uh, you know, uh, blower fans. I had a guy put in three blower fans. Was, My blower fan keeps going out. They're all junk. I'm like, no, wait, 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 wait. You put three blower fans in? Okay, this one had three miles on it. This one had eight miles on it. This one has two miles on it. I'm throwing the flag. I so threw the flag after the first one. Put your face shield chance. on because it might hit you in the helmet there. Uh, not good. I actually um, have flags in my desk drawer at work. We, yeah. To you throw should, in. Yeah, I have, in, a, I have a yellow penalty flag. That, yeah, you should throw it because yeah. I get under there and look, and they're, of course, they're just fuming mad because they've bought three of these parts. Yeah, they did buy them from you, Shannon. I know, and uh, I, the blower resistor was bad. I'm like, dude, look at this. These three terminals are melted. This is what ruined it. Oh, that got to be a bad thing. I'm like, all right, well, here's 250 bucks. We're going to put a new connector on here, a new blower, the, the, the whole thing. And I said, you know what? I'm just going to humor you, and I'm going to put a blower in it. But you just cost me three blowers that were perfectly fine because you didn't put that part on. So we've got to do that, and we do that as mechanics. Sometimes we work on a job and go, oh, this is great. We're going to make some money on this job. We're going to get it done. It's going to be easy. It's going to be out the door. And then we forgot to look at what caused the failure. And it comes back. And then we go backwards. It would be, we would have made more money if we would have not seen it in the first place. <laughs> you're doing it twice work. and you're not doing something else. Because we missed something <laughs> simple. We just should have looked a little harder. We're going to take a break. When we come back, we want to hear from you. 866-594-4150. You're listening to the Under the Hood Show.
where Prepare we... to learn something. You're going under the hood. Side. Welcome back to the Under the Hood Show. 866-594-4150. From the Autotempest.com studios. All the cars, one search. This is the Under the Hood Show. Let's talk to Monica, who's calling from Minnesota. Monica, you're on the Under the Hood Show. What can we do for you? Well, I called in before and you gave me such great advice. So I followed your advice for my 2007 Chevy Suburban, and I got it. I got a, a result. They said it was. Um, Didn't you have a sorry, vibration or something like that, or a misfire? Yes, yes. Remember, I said it sounded like a lawnmower. Yeah, you had a weird noise underneath it. I remember <laughs> you. Right, right. So I was. So it says the 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 first place checked it out and said that there was. Uh, some, um, there was an inspection done, and they needed to replace some in, uh, ignition coil and an injector. So, and then they gave me a price quote, and I was relieved. It wasn't very expensive, and I thought, yes, I'm going to get this done. But it didn't take care of the problem, and since they quoted me that price, they didn't go, you know, they said all the other options, but I got a little scared because I thought, oh, how much do I want to spend on this? So I brought it home and it still ran bad. And then I took it to a repair, another repair place, and he gave me a diagnosis. And I'd like to read it to you if that's okay. Let's give it a shot. Let's see what you got. Here we go. Okay. He said, check why engine does not run right. Connect wiring harness to ignition coils and injectors that were left disconnected by previous inspection. <laughs> Number one cylinder is misfiring constantly. Check compression on cylinder one. It only had 25 pounds. Uh-oh. And it's, he, they said it's most likely a bent push rod and or a bad lifter on cylinder one. Uh-oh. So, so there you go. So now what do I do? I got a diagnosis, but it's been, it, you know, it's finally I got one. If, I didn't know what we're dealing with. If they know, that if they're giving that diagnosis and they did it correctly, saying it's most likely a push rod or lifter, I would have gone one step further and pulled the valve cover, which takes five minutes on that side, and looked to see if the push rod was bent. You can get to it that, you know, very, very quickly over there. Uh, and it would have been cheap for you and at least given you some confidence because if it's a bent push rod, they can put the push rod in almost as quick as they can get the valve cover off. But if it's a lifter problem, that engine may just be done. Um, she doesn't want to hear that, but that's what she may need to hear because before you, she spends a bunch more money right. trying to tune up something that's untunable. You've got an <laughs> active fuel management engine, which means it can shut off cylinders as you go down the road for the cylinders. For fuel economy purposes, the government uh, encourage people to do things like this. And people the, being manufacturers. Right. And the, <laughs> right. the way you said this thing just you, failed Monica. suddenly on you while you were driving is working perfect and then didn't. That is a... a classic case of that problem where lifters will start to fail. The cam will start to come apart. There's metal in the engine. They, they, they typically don't just bend a push rod on their own. It's not likely. So next step, valve cover comes off the driver's side. It, if you know a local mechanic, somebody, a friend of yours, meaning a local mechanic that can do it at home, he can pull that valve cover off of that side like in literally like general in five mechanical minutes. aptitude can yep. do this. If you've got a cordless impact in five minutes, you can get that thing off. They can pull the push rod out at number one and go, Hey, it's not bent at that point. It's time for an engine, but if it is bent, throw another one in there. They're like five bucks, throw it in and put the cover on. See if it, if the mist goes away, if it does, it's going to be the best five bucks you spent plus a gasket. Uh, but if it doesn't fix it, you know, if it's not bent, yeah, I, or it bends again. Yeah, I wouldn't be spe- – well, right, it, it could bend again because you got a valve that's stuck, it's seized in the head, but I, I wouldn't go much further than that because of the – I'm, so quite, let, I'm quite let down by – if this is playing out the way you're describing it, I'm quite let down by shop number one that um, 
had attempted to tune up an engine with a bad cylinder. Yeah. And then left it that way with some stuff unplugged. That's, that's even. That's not a high. They don't get a high score at all. No. And shop number two, I think, did a did a good job. The only thing extra they could have done would be to pull the valve cover and actually see if it's bent. But they've got to decide where does the customer want to stop spending I, money. I'm always very careful, and Russ and I have together coached each other back and forth on this over the years. He's coached me, and I've coached him, and we've tried to coach employees over the years, but. Shop number one, because it's kind of like we're doing an ASE test here right here. Techni- technician <laughs> yeah. number one. But shop number one, sometimes it's easy to point a finger at what they did or didn't do mm-hmm. when suddenly shop number two becomes aware of something. Right. Shop number one may not have had the right technician that day looking at it. And but I can, it, it and you know been, what? might have been limited by, I, by ability. I agree with you on everything, but I have to say something first because I, I kind of have a feeling why it was that way. They quoted me a certain price, and I suppose all of a sudden they met that price, and then I said to stop, don't do any more. So maybe they, you know, I, I'm a nice person, and I'm a business person, so I give everybody a chance. Well, but even if, so you, I'm wondering if, even if you told them you know, to even if you told them to stop because, you know, there was extra things they wanted to do, they still should put it back together in its in, if they know you need to drive it out of there or take it out of there they need to plug everything back in and and finish putting it back together right at a, at a minimum even if it wasn't more money spent to investigate more things and hopefully you would think they would explain the things that they had to yeah, not do and that you're still going to have that issue that's a that's a tough situation it, it there, is. monica and, and i'm still well, a little that, that lawnmower noise that you talked about still it's kind of we're still trying to figure out that's a little bit inconsistent you know to me rust you probably run on four cylinders it was probably that's what that's what worries me is it was probably stuck in the four cylinder mode so it sounds kind of like a lawnmower any even the exhaust is there you go and if it's doing that and now it's come out of that and it's only dead on one cylinder that makes me wonder if something's not chewed up in the cam system in that vehicle Monica, thanks very much for the call. Good luck. We hope you get that one sorted out. And just to say one more thing, mm-hmm. Monica, what we're talking to you about on your 07 Suburban is not unusual, If it, like Russ said, if that yep. is it. Um, okay. What, I see what you're saying. Yeah. It's very, very plausible that there's an internal problem with the cam and lifters. After certain miles, for whatever reason, a number of them did this, and we, we've seen them, a lot of them. Let's go to Idaho and talk to Carrie. Carrie, you're on the Under the Hood Show. What can we do for you? Hey, uh, thanks for taking my call. I have a, a 2001 Dodge Ram 1500, it's a four-wheel drive, 5.9 liter, but I'm having some crazy electrical issues on it. I mean, I'll be first, the speedometer quit working, or it works real sporadically, and also my ABS module is out, but it's been out for quite some time. But uh, I'll be going down the highway, and all of a sudden, the upper dome lights, you know, I don't know if you get that little console they have up above, that gives you a little bit of information. Yep. There's a couple push lights. They'll start flashing off and on for no reason. I've had <laughs> the air conditioner on, and all of a sudden it will go from the front to the defrost. It'll be pushing the AC out of the defrost, and eventually it'll come back to the front vents. Um, I've had the little radio controls on the steering wheel, the volume. I'll go push the down volume, and it'll actually start turning it up. And so I'm just having crazy electrical things going on. And <clears throat> I don't know what's going on. I don't know if it's like the PCM or what could be causing this crazy stuff. Sounds like the dash ground itself is having a, an issue or the body ground. is. Some of the things you described are, are ground side issues, like your steering wheel controls and your radio. That should be a ground side, but it works on resistance to do the different it doesn't have a separate wire for each function, up, down, sand, seek, all that stuff. It's Yeah, because some of the problems we've had, like with the, 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 the uh, thing, the BCM, the it, not, <laughs> front, the, control, front module. control module. Thank you, Russ. But some of those, right. that would be more system related, not such specific. Yeah, those problems are very specific. And this is widespread. Yeah. Across several yeah. items. It's like low voltage <laughs> or, or bad ground. Yeah, and I'm, I'm wondering yeah. if, 
I, I would start well, diagnosing it by getting just a plain old voltmeter and plug it into any one of those systems that's doing weird stuff and look at the look at the voltage on it, see what it is. If you've got two meters, it's great to have one right on the battery at right at the positive uh-huh. negative terminal and then one inside and compare them. And if you've got 14.4 at the battery and you've got 10.8 inside, ooh, we got a problem. Then you move your ground side to the battery itself and leave your positive hooked up. And if it reads correctly, then we know it's a ground side. But if we hook it to the positive side and ground at the stuff and it's the other way, then we know it's the other side. So we got to isolate what's going on, which part of the system is starting to do that. And if we find the voltage is fine on all of them, there is still a possibility. We don't want to go the whole way and say, yeah, all of those systems have a problem. But it is possible. We've seen radio issues with controls in those. We've seen heater issues with controls. We've seen with the dash control itself. We've also seen the overhead console with an issue. So you could have separate items that have failed. Maybe they didn't fail all at once. Maybe they failed within a few weeks, but now it's seeming like they were Yeah, you didn't notice until. But kind of unlikely, though. They kind of. Yep. Seemed all at once, but that would cause, like, the. AC to start blowing out of the defrost. So here's how instead of here's how that system works. You've got a control right in the dash, and it's got a module in it. <clears throat> the wiring runs from that down to the blend door motors and the air mix door motors. And when you lose power, the default mode for that is for them all to blow out the defrost for safety. That's okay. why. That's why. So it you does always it. have defrost. Yep. And then yeah. when it comes back, it comes out wherever you had it set. So that could be what's going on. Going to take some testing in a shop. Carrie, thanks very much for the call. We're going to take a break. Lee, you're up next on the Under the Hood Show. 
Get your planner out right now and schedule your next radio appointment with the Motor Medics. Welcome to the Under the Hood Show, 866-594-4150. From the Autotempest.com studios, all the cars, one search. This is the Under the Hood Show. If you subscribe to the Facebook page, the YouTube channel, the we have a multi-level marketing system we're working on. We're going to send out vitamins automatically every month. You don't have to do anything. If you sign up for that and join the Hoodie Fan Club okay, that's, at underthehoodshow.com. Let's clarify. Either or. Right. Either subscribe to the YouTube page. Oh, I thought you were going to say the vitamins. Yeah. Or, or <laughs> subscribe to the Facebook. Somebody emailed or me. Or join my team. Yeah, on the vitamins. Go. Yeah. Pyramid scheme. <laughs> yeah. Last week, somebody said, oh, well, I don't have Facebook. Mm -hmm. I, I've, I can do YouTube. So I'm like, no, you don't have to do both. Right. One or the other. Subscribe. Right. And then you join the Hoodie Fan Club. So we've got some information about you. Mm -hmm. And we don't do anything with that information. to Except yeah. send, send you a hoodie. Exactly. Right. I, I just happened to notice the other day, we've got thousands and people in there i was like okay. wow look at all these names and nobody's ever got a spam email because they're only right. getting an email if a hoodie shows up magically like da, 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 da. ralph luden luden how would you pronounce that chris how I would, would you think probably L luden l-u-d-e-n no d-d-e-n luden yeah because we got ludens around ralph here of luden. course but... no it's not a luden Yep. St. Paul, Minnesota. He uh, works for a Volkswagen dealership. Smells VW? Schmelz, Schmelz I it think. Smells. Smells, I bet. I think it's Schmelz. I, I, uh, do you? I know that one, yeah. That's where I turn Schmelz. to go north to the village to play softball. To the village. I, I turn at Schmelz. I take the cloverleaf there it's, in 1989. It's funny that Russ had made a schmelting accident reference this morning. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, had a horrible smelting accident. Yeah. Congratulations, Ralph. Yeah, congratulations from our friends over at UTI, Universal Technical Institute. Hey, get trained. Be a, be a tech. Be a real tech. Know what you're doing. They'll train you up. They'll train you up right in the ways of the force. No, the, the ways <laughs> of the, the, the automotive force. You, if you want to be a part of the automotive workforce, you better be trained. Um, right now, people are looking for people. But what do you do when those jobs, as they always do, start getting filled up? Mm -hmm. And they say, yeah, you're not working. You're fired. What? But you, you need me. Mm, not really. We've got, we got more techs and we have spots open right now. So you better be trained. Use, that, use the time now to go to Universal Technical oh, Institute. Yeah. Get trained. And if you already are, trained, and ready to go, our friends over at CarMax is hiring experienced auto technicians for many of its 200-plus stores nationwide. If you're looking for a job where you can make a great living while working on the cars you love, CarMax, it's the place for you. Mm -hmm. Join CarMax and grow your technical expertise and work with state-of-the-art tools and technology. Work on the cars you love. Join CarMax. Apply today at CarMaxAutotech.com. 866-594-4150. Let's talk to Lee. You're on the end of the hood show. Lee, what can we do for you? Hey, guys. Great show. Thank you. We'll, we'll, just, my we'll just leave it at that. Yeah. My, Is that it? My... Oh. Go ahead, Lee. No. Uh, okay. Uh, this is for my son. He has a 1999 Dodge Ram 4x4 with the 5.9 uh, engine in it. And he's been struggling with this problem for a long time. It started out with a number four or a, a code for number four fuel injector. So okay. he's he's pretty good mechanically. So he thought, well, I can do this myself. So uh, he he put that in, and at first it seems to fix it, but the problem comes back, and the uh, engine is missing, and. A lot of times, after a while, it disappears and runs perfect. So when it did it again, he thought, "Well, I'm going to, I'm going to put all the injectors in and make sure the wiring ground looks good." So it fixes it for a little bit, and then it comes back. So after a while, he got a donor vehicle, and he started replacing piece by piece by piece, including the wiring, the PCM whatever um, sensors might be involved, uh, you name it, he's replaced it. 
and the problem is still there. A miss. So he's replaced the entire engine wiring harness is what you're saying. Yeah. And it, it's for a miss that's temperamental because it usually comes out of it. Well, what concerns me is he's, when he messed with the injectors, he unplugged them, plugged them back in, changed some stuff around. All of a sudden it worked for a while and then it stopped working. Those things are yeah. famous for injector connectors that have an issue with connection. Okay. Um, so uh, even if he did the whole harness. It could be a bad one. Matter. The one he put in may be bad or it may have gone bad just from moving it around. They sell the wire pigtail that plugs in the end of mm -hmm. right on the connector. It's got the protector right on the end of it there with the little button you push down and uh, the little, yeah. the little yeah. red slide. And what happens is when people okay. try to pull those protectors out with their pick, sometimes they wreck them. So they have to be, uh, they, they just get loose and you have to replace uh, the, the whole connector in. So if he finds that it's misfiring and he can apply a little pressure to the, wire end and it stops missing then you want to cut it off and replace the pigtail okay. on the end you shouldn't have to replace yes, the, i understand that yeah you shouldn't have to replace the connector and the protector and the injector is all he, together is he confident and i i asked this cautiously because i don't think it's it but is he confident the internals of the engine are good that there's not a valve hanging up yeah. or a cam problem or something yeah, quite quite sure that part is fine. Okay, because we've had plenty of them with I've, valve he's, issues. He's had it uh, to several shops, and they cannot figure it out either. And I've I've told him, why don't you just sell it and get another one? He says, well, I love this truck too much. But well, okay. this, at this point, he has done a full blown NASCAR pit stop where they changed everything, and all of a sudden, the car yeah. didn't work, and they don't really know what did it because he's changed so much stuff yeah and you don't and he, he obviously didn't have a brand new vehicle to switch the stuff from right he bought another older ram right to switch parts from so you could have transferred a problem from the other one i mean it's just that gets to be it, it's a great way to do it no no doubt but if you if you have that luxury but when you've switched that much stuff and you're still getting the same result i Many times we tell people, boy, you really should double check inside that engine. Uh, make sure there's not a valve hanging up. And 360 gas rams had a fair amount of trouble with heads and valves. And so I wouldn't rule that out. Okay. Well, it does have like 190,000 on it. Well, then you want to look at the, well, see which ones are missing. You want to look at the, the valve Is it springs. The same, very close same cylinder missing all the time. Yes. Oh yeah, you want to look at that valve spring really close. I should I should take that back because sometimes he uh, he has a scan tool that he can watch uh, cylinder misfires, mm -hmm. and he says some sometimes uh, it's more than one; it's sporadic. And just random misfire is common on engines as well. Well, I wish we could really diagnose this right. one over the phone, but it's that, that this is a, this is a hard one, and when he's been switching that much stuff, it gets that much more. Challenging. We just want to make sure that you don't put parts on that are, are good and, and replace them with other and parts. Miss it. Yeah, right. Or put a bad part on where a good part was and cause all sorts of headaches then. Lee, thanks very much for the call. Yeah, you could easily replace the part and your miss goes to another one because the part you replaced it with had the same problem there. 866-594-4150. Let's go to Arizona and talk to Warren. You're on the end of the hood show. Warren, what can we do for you? Hey, guys. I have a, a 05 Chevy Silverado, 5.3 liter V8. There's 167,000 miles on it. It's been overall a fair truck, not a great truck, but a fair truck. And the tranny just went out at 167,000 miles. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's a little early. I don't. That's my... You don't think so? Oh, really? Well, we we sell thousands of them here at, with our auto recycling <laughs> business, so we can we can give you a pretty good idea when they go out. I mean, we've got a great 
our guys at the counter get the calls and they say, oh, you need a tranny for what kind of vehicle? Oh, uh, you go. It's got 30 miles on it. Yeah, that's about right. Uh, <laughs> um, you know, Dodge Ram, it's got 300,000. Yeah, that's about right. So we, we kind of gauge that. So when Shannon says, no, I don't, that means, well, we're selling a bunch of them with that many miles. It's, it, it, it's, it's earlier than I want it. It's but earlier than you want it. longer? Oh, yeah. We've got them with 250, 270 working just fine. But uh, at, at one point in its life, it probably had a little trauma. Maybe it got a little hotter at one point than you realize pulling something or doing something, and it just now is rearing its ugly head. I hate that, but it it's it does happen. Are they sure it's completely burned up? They've they've been able to. Oh, oh uh, first of all, yeah, I'll tell you what happened. I was going to work down the freeway, um, and I heard it was like picture two uh, ball peen hammers smacking each other on, uh, head to head. And it was a loud clunky noise. That takes skill. I'm like, uh oh, this isn't good. And I actually made it to work. And I was shocked. So I looked under the truck. I saw no parts. I, you know, I gave it a quick look because I was in uniform. I didn't want to get dirty. I'm like, all right, everything's good. That day after shift was over, I got back in the truck. It ran fine. Went all the way home. No problem. I'm like, what was it? So the following morning, same routine, get out. I put the truck in reverse. Uh oh. It just slid down the driveway. I couldn't get it to go into gear. Um, it wouldn't go into drive. I'm like, oh, this isn't good. So, you know, I just went online, looked up the reputable uh, transmission shop that had five stars. Um, so I just told the guys, take care of it. I have to go to work. Well, the transmission went out. The four-wheel drive transfer case went out. And the, the shift mode, the electronic, um, on the left side of the steering column, electronic four-wheel drive, two-wheel drive, four-wheel drive, that went out. So all three went out for $5,211.90. That's just a big hit to take. I'm wondering if you've ever heard anything like this. I was about to ask you more questions to save you money, but it's too late for that. Right. Well, yeah. let's, Shannon, we got to back up and look do, at I what think. could cause all three items to fail with one single problem. That shift control for the transfer case if it has a problem dropped we've it into, seen it we dropped it into low range we have seen it where they will go into low range electronically and when that happens that control for that four by four will destroy the shift motor the transfer case and sometimes the transmission so if you heard a ping like you were saying really loud all of a sudden while you were driving it could have taken all that out and, and you know you hit it, you hit a home run just now. Uh, I have had that happen to me where it's gone into four wheel drive high. Uh, you know there was a clunk and the steering wheel suddenly was hard to turn as I'm backing up. And the other, yeah, you're right. And it has gone into four wheel drive low. I'm like what the heck's going on? That is your and uh, that's why your trans went out early. The, the when the transfer case died, it it broke something in the transfer. Yeah, because if you would have pulled your dipstick out after the tranny wasn't working and looked at it, your fluid might have still been in good red shape because you had broken hard parts. It wasn't a transmission right. wear or slippage issue. You broke hard parts. The first time we saw a transfer case act like this was one of our old. Uh, he was an employee of ours one time and a good friend of ours, Paul Moots. He had a F one two fifty. Rest in peace, Paul. Yeah. Great guy that uh, the uh, he had an F two fifty that was one of those. Shannon calls it a the hybrid w- weird because it's got an extra lug nut on it and it says it's a two fifty, but it's kind of weird. He was headed out to the lake uh, after work on a Friday night, and there was a very big electrical storm going on. And he swears he got struck by lightning, which is possible. We've seen it on cars before, but. There was a very bright flash, and it was hard to see, and all of a sudden the truck shifted into 4 low, and I had never seen so much destruction. It just exploded, and there was gears and parts on the ground. The drive shaft came out the back of the case because the case hung off. It was just everywhere, and there he sat. <laughs> well, hey, uh, I've got to ask you, Warren, uh, you said your uniform. Um, what Do you serve uh, the public? I'm, I'm with, in the fire service. Thank you yeah, for being involved. I, thank you very much. You're welcome. I wish we had better. Well, guys, I'm really glad you told me this. You know, I, I did a quick, you know, I just went online. I did a quick transmission, you know, who looked at everybody's reviews. And, you know, they were very nice guys. Uh, they were very direct with me. They didn't pull any games. 
Um, I, I just ran five thousand two hundred eleven bucks. Mm -hmm. Well, if they did, cents. if they did all those components, I mean, you're talking about. They did. I mean, let's just quick rundown, Russ. Tell me how far off I am. Transmission, give or take two thousand bucks for a remanufactured transmission. You've got a transfer case. If it ruined that, they are give or take a thousand dollars. Um, and then you start uh, getting into some of the control components. If they had a problem with the shift module motor, you're, Five, looking, at a, you're bucks. looking at a three hundred dollar piece and a two hundred dollar piece, and then you start throwing twelve hours labor, of labor on top at, of it. at it. You, you Depending get to, on the shop, forty five hundred to yeah. six thousand. He got to his five thousand pretty quick with with things that make sense. Is there anything now that he has to worry about that, or is it is it good to go now? I mean, are we sure that it's not gonna if they replaced those components and and they found the failure point, he should be very, very, very confident. confident. I said that in, unconfidently, though. Yeah, you did. You did. <laughs> Things can break again, but it shouldn't. Warren, thanks very much for the call. 866-594-4150. We're going to take a break. When we come back, we want to hear from you on the Under the Hood Show. Car feeling ill? Don't want to spread it to your wallet? Call the Motor Medics now for free advice. 866-594-4150. From the Autotempest.com studios, all the cars, one search. This is the Under the Hood Show. Let's talk to Brent. Brent, you're on the Under the Hood Show. What can we do for you? He's got a Nova. Mm -hmm. It's it's that, that butter pecan syndrome thing again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we were just talking about Nova's brain. Buster Ryan syndrome. I, yeah. All right. What is it called, Chris? Bader Meinhof. Right. Yes, where, we where, have to ask him every where time. Where you yeah. think of something and all of a sudden, it within pops, seconds, yeah. it pops up. And uh -huh. we just said, I was in traffic yesterday, and there was this car and this car, and I think it was a there was a Nova too. He's going to say, Oh, I was driving around in my '78 Nova yesterday. I hope so. I hope he was driving. Yeah, it's no, guy. it's in the garage. Oh, oh. boy. Okay. No butter pecan no, syndrome. Got some brake problems. So it's. 
No, it's got uh, all Willwood brakes. It's got the Dynalite 13 uh, inch rotors up front, the six pistons, and then the 11 inch with the four pistons in the rear. And I just put in a new inch and an eighth uh, bore Willwood master cylinder and their adjustable prop valve. Oh yeah. And uh, I I I haven't troubles bleeding it. I got a soft pedal. I've tried bench bleeding several times. I'm not getting any air there. Um, uh, had the wife hit the pedal and I cracked the bleeders and no luck there. And then I tried the vacuum bleeding, uh, just getting nothing. I think I've read that there's some issues with those prop valves mm. shuttling one way or the other. And yeah, is that true or if it, if it okay. jammed to one the, side, it could do that. Are you getting fluid out of one end, but not the other front or rear? Uh, it seems like it's a little bit out of both. It's pretty aerated out of both. Okay. Well, start and when when we get these that get completely wacky and we don't know where we're getting the issue from, we start at the beginning. We go right to the master cylinder, remove the both the hoses from it, the lines, and then put a plug in each one and bench bleed the master cylinder in the car. Uh, you fill it up with fluid. You crack one of the plugs open a little bit, step on it, close it, you know, like you're doing a brake bleed until that brake pedal is 100% solid and it only moves down a, you know, eighth of an inch if you, or so. If you can't get that, you just found your problem. Yep. If you can't get that, well, that's the first problem to fix. So once once you know you fix that, do, 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 do. Chris, silence your phone, dude. Sorry. Come on, Chris. Anyways, uh, you, uh, you get it, do it at the master cylinder and then move on down. And we have found often where we go, oh, it's right here and the master cylinder's had an issue. But if it's not, we move on down to that proportioning valve and then we try to bleed it at the the far, the outlet side of the proportioning valve, same way. And if we can get fluid out one end and not the other of the proportioning valve, we close one side and open up the opposite side and give it a quick tap on the brake pedal and then close them both, see if we can get that slide inside of there to move itself back the other direction and then bleed the brakes on from there. But we, we always start back at the master sonar because we've put on several sets of these on street rods we had built and we had some we had some of those with the valve that would stick one way but we also had some master cylinders that had an issue for whatever reason i think they got okay depressed at the factory before they were shipped out i'm not sure even where they're and or when you've installed them i mean we've had people do that where they've installed them and they've anything can happen Extended the, them before there was fluid in them. And, and on the chat, someone said, check the calipers, make sure they're all in the right position, right the, side up. And that, yeah, and if one of them is hanging up and won't release, you know, because the way it's installed or faulty or whatever, it's not going to, yeah, it's, it's going to give you that. But if you start at the master cylinder and you have nothing there, if you can't get the pressure there with plugs in both of them, you know for sure that's you've got to start there. And, and for our hoodies hoodie. listening, here's what this boils down to. He spent a lot of money on a performance brake set, a and it doesn't work, and he doesn't like it. Right? Right. Mm-hmm. A lot yeah, of money. That's pretty saddening, man. Because you, I, I've done that on, on oh. like, ATVs and stuff today. You've done all this work, and like, yeah, I spent the money. It's going to be great. And then it doesn't work. You're like, oh, it's so sad. It's, <laughs> yeah. it's double sad at right. that point. Yeah. Oh. Well, check those yeah, things so it's out. It's got the good brakes and good, good, good suspension. It's got all Hotchkiss suspension. and. What city uh, are you? Injected engine, what overdrive, city, uh, so. state you in? Two Falls. Oh, you are. What? So okay. Local. Now yep. we got. We're gonna dig a little deeper into this car. We like to play this little game. Seventy-eight Nova. Tell me the motor size. What's going on here? What do you got? Uh, it's a three fifty-eight uh, with the Fitech Mean Street. Um, it's about four hundred twenty horse. So a fun car, not a crazy. It's got a built. Not a crazy drag strip car. Just a fun car that you can you can tour with yeah just uh you know hit some motocross and uh yeah pro touring is kind of what it was built for all right now we we have to guess um, and actually i i did oh sorry no no I'll, you, you finish because what you're going to do is way more interesting probably what i'm going to do so <laughs> um and it's it's actually not uh, a nova it's a 78 oldsmobile omega oh yeah but there's a lot of people that don't know what an Omega is, so oh, I always do. say it's a Nova. Uh, <laughs> that so, you should have yeah, said it was my that grandma's car. I bought funny. it. You should have said Omega, because <laughs> yeah. that would have been more fun. Well, I'm going to change my answer to the question you're going to ask too. next. I, my answer did change. Is it the original color? 
Don't say the color. Is Just it the it. original color? It's not, and I wish it was. Okay. Okay, that's a okay. clue. Okay. So we we have two ways to win. We can either <laughs> guess the original color or the color it is now. If yeah. it were a '78 Nova, it would have uh, no, been blue. No, 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 if it was a '70, if, 70, it, if it were. If it were a 78 Nova, it would have been blue because all Novas are blue. I, I'm saying it's Omega. <laughs> I'm saying the original color was white, and now it's probably kind of a brownish I'm color. I'm saying it was a 78 Omega that was maroon, and now it's candy apple red. I'm going to say it was gold, and now it's blue. What do we got? All right, so factory color, it was that kind of lighter sky blue Ooh, okay. And then now it's a, an indigo, a, a dark, dark metallic blue. So it stayed oh, blue. Okay. Oh, that's, that's fun. <laughs> it well, stayed blue. And then, yeah, the third time it's going to get painted and it's going to end up being um, kind of like the 2014 Raptor, um, oh, that yeah. blue flame metallic. Yes. Okay. Good color. Oh, Beautiful. Factory color. Yeah. Brent, uh, thanks very much for the call. Good luck. Blue. That's all I think. I, it's because Kenny Hilgert's brother had a blue Nova. That was so cool. That's the only thing I see whenever I, I hear about a Nova. I see the Hilgert's Nova blue. Sure, sure it wasn't an Omega? That'll do it for this hour of the Under the Hood Show. Until next time, you can find us at underthehoodshow.com. Hour 2 is coming up. The Under the Hood Show is brought to you by Sturdivant's.